In this tutorial we're going to look at basic cameras, lights, and materials for Arnold which is the built-in renderer for 3ds Max. So if you don't see Arnold in uh, up there go to rendering render setup and just make sure that Arnold is listed here. If it's not you go you can go to the common tab scroll all the way down to the bottom and under assign renderer make sure under production it says Arnold and this should be the case for uh, 3ds Max 2020 or 2021 and then definitely in 2021 it's the built-in default render um, and any other renders you have for example if you have V-Ray or Mental Ray, Ray installed would also show up here and so you can change between these different types uh, but make sure for this assignment you have Arnold selected um, and then we can talk about all this other stuff later but uh, let's go ahead and close that out. The next thing we want to choose is just a basic material. Whenever I'm doing rendering, I always start with a white material so I can see shadows, um, make sure lighting is looking good before I start adding materials and before I get it too far down in the process. So to open your material editor, you can hit this button or hit M, which is the shortcut. And then if you're using Arnold, you'll have a series of Arnold uh, materials that are already kind of by default set up here. Um, one thing with uh, rendering in materials is you always have a material category and a map category. So maps can get applied to materials, but you apply a material to an object. So we always want to start with materials. So let's open up materials um, and then let's go to Arnold. You can open or close that menu here. And we're just going to use surface to begin with. And let's just start with a basic um, standard surface here. So I can double click on that and then it will populate my canvas here with that material and you can see there's a ton of different options here all of these little outputs can uh, connect to all of the maps that are located in here but for now we'll just use a sta standard uh, material with a basic white color which is the default color here so to apply it you can just select your objects in your scene just drag a cursor over them and then over here in the upper left if you hover over this button it says assign material to selection you can click that and you know it's assigned when you get these four little white kind of ticks in the corner there. So that material is now assigned to those selected objects. The next thing we want to do is let's just um, go ahead and make a light. So if we go to our Create tab and go to our Lights here, um, from the drop-down you have Photometric Standard and Arnold Lights. We want, Since we're rendering an Arnold, we want to use an Arnold Light. So we can just select Arnold Light and then just drag in your scene. Um, and that will create the light. And by the way, it doesn't matter which one. If I undo that, I can drag, for example, in the front viewport. It doesn't really matter which one you drag it in. Um, it'll create it in all four of the viewports. So we can then, once we have it, you can select the light source, which is this globe, and you can move it to whatever angle you want it to be projecting light onto the object from. Um, and then you can also, if you want, select the target. I'll go ahead and create a new layer now and we'll call this light just to keep that kind of separate and then let's make sure I accidentally left the target in the hinge layer so I'll drag that target and I'll drag it into the light layer there. There we go. So you actually got to drag it onto that light layer. Okay, so again, you can always move the target separately as well. Make sure the target's lined up correctly. And then we can, uh, next thing we can do is create an actual camera. So the way Arnold works is it uses the standard uh, camera, physical camera within 3ds Max. There's a few ways to create that. You can go to your uh, Create tab, go to your camera icon here, and then when from the standard drop down you can select physical camera and just like the light you can just drag it in your scene I always do my lights and my cameras in the four viewports here so you can always minimize or maximize uh, but it's always a good idea so you can move in the front view or the top view or the left view to really position the light and the camera the way you want it so I'll go ahead and drag this camera here um, and then we can start looking at it. The other way you can do this, by the way, is to move in your perspective view, just using your orbit and mouse to move to the view you want and then go up here to create and say, uh, or sorry, to uh, um, yeah, create cameras and you can create a physical camera from the view. And then you can, it'll do it just like what I've done here, and then you can move it in the different viewports, but that's just another way to do it. So again, uh, you can select either the target or the camera, 
and then move these things to where you exactly where you want them to be and then another thing that's really helpful is to turn one of your viewports into the view from the camera so if I select here where it says perspective and go to cameras all of your cameras will be listed here I only have one so I can select that one camera and you can see that is now the view from my camera so I can always drag and, and get a little closer if I want um, the other thing is if you select the camera go to your modify tab this will allow you to change certain parameters so you can just kind of fool around with these like if you want to change the focal length for example like if I uh, you know um, change this to 15 you can see it kind of zooms in a little bit so you can kind of toggle around what you want that focal length to be which is really the um, if the lens is a wide angle lens or not your standard point and shoot is 35 millimeters so it would look something like that and then a wide angle lens which is often used in architecture is more like a 21 or a 24 millimeter and it just captures a little more of the scene and, and it's really up to you what you want to do there but just try different ones uh, maybe I'll do 21 to be a little more zoomed out and then you can always move this around until you're you're happy with um, the location of it um, you can also change other things like the aperture and the exposure we'll talk about that a little bit later when we get into rendering but it works much like a real camera would in real life so you can change the shutter speed for example to make it brighter or darker um, okay so the next thing we want to do is make sure our, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, maximize my camera viewport there and so by the way once you're in a camera you can't really move in orbit the same way you would in perspective view because it's locked into that camera view so if you want to move around again just change it back to perspective view but once you're in a camera view only move the camera to change the the um, view from the camera one thing that's kind of nice is you can click right there where it says physical camera and say show safe frame and that is going to be the actual rendering that I'm going to capture. So I can actually see what it, the, the framing of that view will be once I render it. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is go to our rendering render setup and make sure that uh, our size is correct. So if we go to common here, this is the output size you're going to render at. And so right now, 1280 uh, by 720 is this equivalent of an HDTV so that's totally fine in this virtual format if you were going to print that on a piece of paper though you'd want the resolution to be much higher uh, one way to figure that out is to go into Photoshop and figure out the pixel sizes of the width and the height of a page that you want to print to uh, an easier way will be to go to customize uh, or sorry under rendering um, go to print size assistant and you can choose the actual size that you want to print that rendering to. So if you want to do an 11 by 17 inch rendering, you could hit 11 by 17 inch and make sure the DPI is at least 200. You can see that's going to be a 3400 by 2200 rendering pixels in each dimension. So that's a high resolution rendering. Of course, the higher those numbers, the longer it will take to render. So for this example, if I go back to my render setup, that's going to take way too long. So I'm not going to use such a high um, resolution. I'll drop it back down to 1280 by 720. Um, and again, it's just depending on the format that you want to display the rendering in at the end of the day. Um, so a few other things. When I render this, the probably it's going to be too dark. Um, if I just quickly go ahead and go to rendering, render. Yeah, you can see it's pretty dark. Um, and I won't even let it keep going. I'll just go ahead and stop it there. Um, so the light right now uh, needs to be brighter. So to make that brighter, we can just select our light. I'll just select it from the list over here and then if we look at the modify tab we can change the intensity of that light so right now it's set at one but um, this is really trial and error what if I I'll just try a hundred you know just see how how intense that is and then we'll hit render again that's still too dark so I'm gonna go ahead and close that and then I'll render, uh, I'll change the intensity again. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video uh, and I'm going to try different intensities until I get the right one, but that's really how you change it um, at the beginning. Okay, so that took quite a few uh, minutes, but it turns out uh, the perfect uh, intensity for mine was 9,000. Um, so uh, just give yourself some time to let it render, but um, that looks pretty good from here. So next we'll talk about material.